Acting News. Where you see the news. That stuff is dead. Dead. Terrible stuff. You, if you smoked it, you're a retard. Ugh. All right, are you guys ready for your headliner this evening? Make some noise. All right. Please put your hands together for Bill Squire. Hey, thanks for coming out, everybody. Thank you. Yourselves a round of applause. I really appreciate it. Seriously. All right. I wish I was in a better mood, though. Seriously, I, I'm not in a great mood. I know it's like my DVD filming. Uh, the place is sold out. I'm supposed to be super pumped up, but I'm just not because I, I have a canker sore. And <laughs> it's driving me crazy. I've had this canker sore for like a week and a half, and it will not go away. And every time I think it's going to heal, I accidentally bite it, and then it starts all over again. And then I can't leave it alone because I have OCD, so I just keep tonguing it. And I don't think I... Like, is there anything worse you could have in your mouth than a canker sore? Like, maybe a dick, but it depends how long it's there for, because, like, this is a week and a half. Right? Like, I'll take a dick in my mouth for five seconds, but it means this thing goes away. Like, one thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five one thousand, you're done, it's over. And, like, guys, after the show, I'll be like, hey, I can make that happen. Uh, I'm not falling for that shit twice. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, please don't come in my mouth. And say, uh, it's the same my mom had. No, I'm sorry, it's my dad. I'm sorry. It was. Uh, so I'm getting too fat. Uh, that's why I dress like this. I'm not trying to look nice. I'm just trying to hide everything. It's not even a nice suit. It's a George Foreman. Came with my grill. And. Uh, <laughs> I gotta wear a tire or else this button's gonna fly off and hit this lady in the face. And that's not a good way to meet women. Like, hey, remember when my button hit you in the face? Because of my obesity? <laughs> Would you like anything else of mine to hit you in the face? <laughs> that's, like, when I go to the grocery store, people ask me where the junk food is. Like, hey, dude, where are the Twinkies? I'm like, it doesn't matter. I have them all. <laughs> I got one friend, he's always trying to help me lose weight. He's like, Bill, losing weight's not hard. All you got to do is watch what you eat. Like, what do you have for breakfast? I'm like, cereal? He's like, how many bowls do you have? I'm like, how many bowls are in a box? <laughs> what kind of milk do you use? Whipped cream. <laughs> it's, it's really good. It is. It's good. A little expensive, but it's worth it. You got, you got to treat yourself. <laughs> have you ever thought you lost weight because you put on a pair of pants, and last time you had them on, they were kind of tight? And then you put them on a few weeks later, and they're kind of loose. You're like, hey, good for me. I lost weight, even though I didn't do anything. But then it turns out you just ripped a seam. <laughs> we didn't realize it, so you're already in public. You're like, why is my junk cold? <laughs> oh, these are sweatpants. How do you even do that? <sighs> I actually have lost weight recently. Uh, I lost like 30 pounds, and... Uh, Thank, thanks for that small smattering of applause. I appreciate the honesty of everybody else that didn't clap. They're just like, long way to go, fatso. Long way to go. So I, I lost weight. I got fat because I never knew how to eat right. Like I grew up eating just shitty food, and then food became an addiction and just was my favorite way to be happy. And then like, I, what sucks is like, I have this friend, and he eats worse than I ever did. Like, he eats terrible, but he's really skinny because he's got Crohn's disease. So I was, like, I was like, how do I get that disease? He's like, Bill, you can't catch it. Either you have it or you don't. I'm like, yeah, right. Give me some of your blood. And he's like, Bill, it's not a good disease. I shit my pants all the time. I'm, I'm like, yeah, so do I. At least you're skinny. Like... I have stretch marks. Yeah. But I don't like to think of them as stretch marks. I like to pretend that they're tattoos of flames. Just all over, yeah. They're even on my legs. Ugh. Talk about a fire crotch. <laughs> if 
If I take my shirt off in public, people are like, hey man, who did your tats? I'm like, trans fats. <laughs> so, from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, yeah, I like, yeah, it's all right. Uh, I like sports even though I'm from there. Cause <laughs> Even though we don't have the best teams, they have good names, good, intimidating names. You know, we got the Cavaliers, we'll cut you with a sword that we took out of our back. <laughs> you know, we got the Indians, we'll shoot you with a bow and arrow and trade you to the Yankees. <laughs> we got the Indians. Oh, I just said the Indians. Hey, fucking edit. <laughs> nervous, a little nervous, because uh, we got the Browns, right? We'll shit on you. <laughs> Usually shit on ourselves first, but whatever, then just wipe it on you as you run by us for many touchdowns. Oh. The Indians played, remember at the beginning of the year, everybody was all excited because they were winning games, and it sucked, because then people started going to the games again. I hate that. I like when nobody goes. Last year, the week, like two, what, two years ago, when they, they won like 17 games, you could go and you could sit wherever you want. It was great. I would just sit on the end of the dugout and just tell them what to do. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I know the bases are loaded and there's no outs, but let's bunt. Who gives a shit? <laughs> it's June and we're already mathematically eliminated from the playoffs. <laughs> we're playing the arrows, for Christ's sake. <laughs> we're not even a professional, like a major league team. <laughs> oh. People always complain about the weather in Cleveland, you know. They're like, oh, it's too cold. I don't like cold weather. I love cold weather because I like to watch people fall down. <laughs> I was in a grocery store parking lot in January. There was this guy walking to his car. One hand, he had a big bag of groceries. The other hand, he had a cell phone just texting away like a 13-year-old girl at a family dinner, <laughs> not paying attention to the big patch of African-American ice. about 20 feet in front of him. <laughs> and at that moment, a little angel showed up on my right shoulder. He's like, Bill, you need to warn this man about the ice so he doesn't slip and fall and hurt himself. And a little devil showed up on my left shoulder. He's like, Bill, get out your phone. <laughs> so I got it out and I started filming him, right? And it was great, because when he fell, he had eggs in his grocery bag and they flew up into the air. He's on the ground. They start landing on him. He's sitting there. He's laying on the ground. He's covered in eggs. He's crying. He's like, sir, could you please call 911? I think I broke my leg. I'm hurt very badly. And I'm like, sir, I can't make calls while I'm doing video, so. <laughs> you just gonna have to stop doing hilarious things. <laughs> Use your phone, but it broke when you fell. <laughs> and thank you guys for laughing at African American Ice. Uh, I appreciate that. People get nervous when white comics make fun of black people. Because, like, you know, when black comics make fun of white people, everybody agrees, like, yeah, we are goofy and stupid. But, like, I'm not, like, racist. I just, like, growing up, the only black people I knew were the Huxtables from The Cosby Show and, like, the Banks family from The Fresh Prince of Bel Air. So I thought all black people were really rich doctors and lawyers, and they got to wear awesome sweaters. So I'm like, what are they so mad about? Like, why would. Things seem to be going well for you. <laughs> and there's so many stereotypes that are associated with black people that don't make sense. Maybe a long time ago they made sense, but now they don't. They're just antiquated and stupid. Like the food black people like, watermelon and fried chicken. Who the fuck doesn't like watermelon and fried chicken? <laughs> Ask anybody in the world what their favorite food is. Like, hey man, what's your favorite food? Watermelon and fried chicken. Where are you from? Iran. It's so good. <laughs> I only had it once because it's illegal here, but it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> or like, uh, black people have bad credit? Uh, oh, they're the only ones? Like, I thought, I thought that was everybody. I thought the banks that told us we have bad credit had bad credit now. Like, that's, th that's the American way. You buy shit you don't need with money you don't have, and then when the bill shows up, you get mad at China for making things affordable, right? Like, I have an iPhone. I shouldn't be able to afford an iPhone. That thing's fucking magic. It cost a million dollars. But it they make it in China, so it's super cheap. Because, you know, they don't, they don't have, like, a union or whatever. And, like, because I'm not going to sit in an iPhone factory all day working for minimum wage, putting all that little shit together. But in China, they don't care because they're already squinting all the time anyway. <laughs> right? 
And if you're not laughing at that, then get back to work, because I want an iPhone 5. <laughs> not an iPhone 4S. You can't just pluralize it and think I'm going to be happy about that. Like, it's not better. <laughs> or here's one that is stupid, because like, it puts a lot of pressure on black men. It's uh, that black men have big penises, right? And I understand, like, big is a relative term. Like, what's big to one person isn't big to another. Like, my dick is huge compared to a grain of salt. <laughs> but a black guy with a big swinging dick, that's little compared to a 747. <laughs> and my dad would be way more upset if he found a 747 in my sister's vagina. <laughs> All right? <laughs> You're right, no, he wouldn't. <laughs> He's old-fashioned. <laughs> I love how in this day and age, old-fashioned is this. Of, oh, he's a racist. <laughs> but, but we'll call him old-fashioned. <laughs> so, I hate when people try to use their race to own something that everybody enjoys. Like Irish people just like, oh, I'm Irish, so I really like to drink because I'm Irish. That's what we do. You're not, you know, everybody likes to drink. You're just the worst at it. Like, you just get... <laughs> drunk and hurt people. Like, everybody else can just do it and have a good time. Like, it's not like Japanese people don't like to get drunk. They're like, oh, I don't want to drink. I'm Japanese. No, they have a good time. They're drinking, singing karaoke, falling out of their chairs, driving better. They're, they're doing a lot of good things. Yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's true. They, the Asians drive better when they're drunk. because It's on Wikipedia. <laughs> At least it was. They keep taking it down, then I gotta put it back in. <laughs> Or like uh, the Italians do this. They're like, oh, I'm Italian. I really like food because I'm Italian. You know, I'm Italian. We really like food. Oh, that's why people are starving to death in Africa? <laughs> They're just like, hey, you want some food? No, I'm not really into it. It's, it's, it's not my thing. I'm not Italian. I don't know if you noticed. I am African. I like when flies crawl around on my face. That's what I like. And uh, it's hard to keep food on my plate because it's in my lip and it just slides right off. <laughs> It's just, people get mad at some of my shows. Like one time there's this guy that got mad at something I, uh, I said. He was a white guy and he got mad because I called him a wigger, which is stupid. Because like you shouldn't be getting mad about that. Because like if I call a black person the N-word, yeah, you can get mad. Like uh, that's a terrible word. And I never use it unless I'm home by myself watching football. But, <laughs> but I use it for the white players too, so... But like that's the thing, like wigger, like we've never oppressed wiggers in this country. You can't get mad at that. Like there wasn't a time in this country where we made fans of the insane clown posse into slaves. <laughs> like the only the only person that's ever oppressed a wigger is a responsible parent. <laughs> but, you can't wear those pants. Those are fubu. That means for us, by us. We're not us. We're them. We have to wear Dockers. <laughs> uh, I like my job as a comedian because I can drink and smoke weed pretty much at my own. They don't drug test for it because there is no them. Like, it's just me. Uh, that'd be weird if I drug tested myself. I'm like... Oh, Bill, you can't go on the road this week because you tested positive for marijuana. Oh, man, I'm always letting myself down. <laughs> you ever get really high and you think you're going to say something that's going to change the world? You're like, you think like, you have this thought. You're like, oh, my God, once I say this, it's just everything's going to be fixed. You're like, you're like I'm going to tweet Obama and tell him this, and he can just put it into, like, put the, the, this uh, bill into effect, and then we'll just, it'll be awesome. And, like, I had this moment with my friend. I got really high, and uh, he was a comedian, too, and we were just both really high. And I can't stress that enough, <laughs> how high we were. Because this is what I thought. Like, I had this thought that I'm like, when I say this out loud, everything will be better. And he's like, well, tell me. And he's like, you got to tell me. Like, you can't, you can't not tell me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, dude. I'm going to tell you. And this is what I said. I said, you know, SpaghettiOs are a lie. 
because not all of them are O's, because some of them are broken. <laughs> How can they call them SpaghettiOs? And he was just as high as I was, so he was like, dude, that's so important. <laughs> that's so, like, that is true. Like, the truth is so important. But Obama never tweeted back. Like, <laughs> I guess he didn't think it was as important. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever got like super high, like I was like like really like I had smoked weed a few times, but never like took hold of my brain and like changed me. And then, then I finally did this one time, and it was awesome. Like I was, it was like you know, because like the first time you get high, you don't get that high. But this is the time I got high, and I like I was giggling, holding the door to the refrigerator for 25 minutes. So it was like, <laughs> <laughs> so I get really high. And then I'm like, this is so amazing, I gotta write it down. I gotta tell people what I'm feeling. So I get on my computer, I open a document, I start typing, and this is what I wrote. My dick feels like magic. <laughs> it's a lightning rod of positivity. <laughs> ooh, ooh, pizza's here. <laughs> Which is pretty funny all by itself, right? But it's even funny if you understand that I got high, immediately ordered a pizza, and then sat down and started writing. <laughs> and was able to get out three sentence fragments <laughs> in 45 minutes. <laughs> and I saved it. <laughs> and I know I saved it because about a year and a half later, I got an email from my wife with the subject, what the hell is this? <laughs> and that document attached. So I, I read it, and I'm like, oh, I got really high, and that's what I was feeling at the moment. And she's like, well, I can assure you, your dick is not magic. It is not a lightning rod of positivity. It's like a thimble of mediocrity. Where'd you get the pizza from? I'm like, are you high too? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> drinking whiskey tonight. I like whiskey uh, because I take on the attributes of wherever it was made. Like if I drink, you know, that's Canadian whiskey. When I drink it, I become nice like a Canadian. I'm like, oh, come on over to my house, you know, watch some hockey. I'll share my health care with you. It'll be, it'll be a great time, you know. <laughs> Get some Tim Hortons. You drink like, I, like when I drink Irish whiskey, that's like a whole, like I become like a drunk Irish Catholic. I'm like, ooh, God bless these poor souls on the road with me because I am pissed drunk. <laughs> drink Jack Daniels. I become like a drunk, uneducated Southerner. I become like a regular Southerner. <laughs> like, just uh, any Southerner, pretty much. And like, no, I tell you about these motherfuckers. <laughs> they have the alphabet, all right? We don't need that queer shit. <laughs> I don't like them letters. You group them together, then you get words. You group the words together, then you get senses. Group the senses together, then you get paragraphs. Before you know it, you got books, and books are gay as shit. <laughs> says so in the Bible. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's only one letter we really need, and that's the letter three. <laughs> I miss you so much, Dale. <laughs> I miss you so much. God needed a driver. <laughs> Why couldn't he take Junior? He never fucking wins. <laughs> Remember when you first start drinking, like, you know, and you get, people try to trick you with the names of stuff, like, someone be like, here, have a beer, and you're like, oh my god, Milwaukee's best, thank you. <laughs> this is going to be so good. They make a ton of beer in Milwaukee, I know that. They make a ton of, and here is the best. It's going to be so good. I cannot wait to try this. <laughs> <laughs> Milwaukee, you son of a bitch. <laughs> You got me. This isn't good at all. This tastes like piss filtered through gravel. That's... <laughs> I love ironically named beer, though. Like, Milwaukee's Best, uh, Paps Blue Ribbon. They want a blue ribbon. <laughs> For what? <laughs> My guess, spousal abuse. <laughs> Last November, 
Uh, I was in western Pennsylvania, and there it was hunting season, and they had bush beer and camouflage cans so the deer wouldn't see it. <laughs> Which I guess is a good idea until you set it down. You're like, ah, shit. <laughs> hey, don't walk over here, man. Don't walk. Should put an orange stripe on it. A lot of people, when they drink, they like to play games. Like, my friends like to play games. They're like, drinking, I don't need to play games, you know. I'm an adult. I have reasons. <laughs> Every time you can't pay a bill, drink. <laughs> and so forth. Like, there's, there's a lot of them. But I don't know. Like, they play games like Never Have I Ever. You guys know that game? If you don't know that game, this is how you play it. You say, Never Have I Ever. Then you say something you've never done. If the other people playing the game have done that thing, and they have to drink. And I can't play that game because I've done too much weird shit. <laughs> and I get way too drunk. Like, example, if someone would be like, never have I ever pleasured myself in a subway <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> Guess who's drinking? <laughs> I know, I thought it was safe until they said restaurant. And then I was like, ah, there was that time <laughs> when I used to, yeah, you know, it was, it was, you know uh, I worked there, and I closed up and turned off the lights and punched out. And don't worry, I had my gloves on. I followed the health code. Uh, <laughs> just, you know. Or like another one, if someone would be like, never have I ever been in the shower, pooped into my hand, and then thrown it into the toilet. Guess who's drinking? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, I, I, I have a wife, and she gets mad if I get the rug wet when I get out of the shower. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna turn off the shower, dry off, take a shit, and then start all over. I don't get that kind of time. So you got two options in that situation. You can play a little game of cornhole, and you just toss it in. Yeah. If you do that, go underhand, not overhand. It's, it's not the Super Bowl. You don't want to spike it. It's like diving. The smaller the splash, the better. That's one option. The only other option is just to do it in the tub and then stomp it down the drain. And that is a slipping hazard. And I am safety first. And I know you guys are like, that's really gross, but it's actually my wife's favorite joke. Because that's how she knows no one will sleep with me after a show. Like, I can't, I can't cheat on my wife because of that joke. Because no one's going to be like, you know what? I really want to fuck that guy that shits in his hand like that. That's, let's do this. That's not gonna, yeah. uh, so, uh, have you ever wanted to punch someone in the face really bad? Yeah, but you can't, because they're a child. So instead, you just whisper something awful in their ear. You're like, Santa Claus is dead, and it's your fault. <laughs> like I said, I have a wife. She's got three kids from a previous marriage. And that's why I wrote that joke. Uh, three girls are right now. I don't know anything about raising kids. But I have a theory now. I think it's easier to raise boys than it is to raise girls. Because boys are going to do dumb shit no matter how good a parent you are. <laughs> Seriously, I had amazing parents. But I still stuck my dick in a vacuum cleaner once. <laughs> Yeah, and if you ever do that, use the hose, not the spinny part. All right, just, <laughs> just a little tip. Or it is now. <laughs> and guess who's drinking? <laughs> so, and I'm not, I'm not a very angry person, but no one can make you mad like a child can. Like if you want to get mad, and I mean really angry, try and put gloves on a five-year-old. That's too close. No, that's too far. That's too close. No, that's too far. That's too close. That's too far. Too close. 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 Just put your hands in your fucking pockets or it'll buy you some mittens! Kids will do things you could never think of on your own. The other day we were cleaning their room under their bed. We found a bowl of urine. Yeah, so that means one of the girls peed in a bowl and then just put it under the bed. I didn't even know what it was when I found it. I was like, what is this, ramen? You ate all your noodles? Why would you do that? 
<laughs> Just put that back under the bed for mommy. <sighs> They say things that you, can, you can't be ready for. Like one day, we're driving around from the back seat, I hear one of the girls yell, Jay keeps digging in her winky. <laughs> I can't unhear that, that's, that's forever. That's in my brain forever. And there's so many things wrong with that statement. First of all, she called her out by name. She didn't want there to be any confusion as who the culprit was. Second, she said keeps. Meaning she gave her a couple chances <laughs> to get it out of her system. <laughs> Followed by digging in, not around or amongst her winky, which I guess is what they call their vaginas. I don't know why. Perhaps because it looks like a single eye closed turned sideways. <laughs> That's just my hunch based on the visual, right? But it, my favorite part of the whole exchange is she wasn't even embarrassed or ashamed. She was just like, only sometimes. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. <sighs> they're so mean. They're really mean to each other. They're like, there's three little girls. They call each other names all the time. Like, they call each other fat and ugly. And I'm like, you guys, you guys are sisters. You look the same. <laughs> There's no, like, all right, whatever. Because, <laughs> like, I had brothers growing up. I had one sister, three brothers, and we were mean to each other, too. But we were taught sticks and stones will break your bones, but names will never hurt you. So, like, well, let's go get some sticks and stones. <laughs> and beat the shit out of each other. And that's what we do. We'd hurt each other all the time. Not even when we were fighting. We'd hurt each other when we were playing games because we played stupid games, like Mortal Kombat. Not, not the video game, we made up our own version that we played in real life. And this is how we played it. We took a rock, put it inside of a sock, you know, for padding. <laughs> and then we tied a rope around the end of it, and we'd throw it across the room and try and trip each other. And uh, we were playing this one time in our basement. Well, we only played it one time. Uh, <laughs> in our basement. We didn't have a finished basement. It was just all concrete everywhere. I was the one throwing it. I was like 12. My little brother was the one running. He was like five and uh, yeah that's why it's a good story and uh, so I start spinning this thing around and I chuck it across the room and it wraps around his feet perfectly and I was like get over here <laughs> and he goes airborne for a moment and then he slams down on the ground right on his elbow and it shattered I know we were mad at him too <laughs> we're like come on Steve why you gotta ruin the game but now we had a problem. We had to figure out what to tell my parents. Because we couldn't tell them we were playing Mortal Kombat. Because then they think that video games were a bad influence, and they take them away. So instead, we told them that we were acting out a scene from the Bible. <laughs> hoping they'd take the Bible away. We use that excuse all the time. They caught on to us after a while. They're like, I don't remember a scene in the Bible where someone got shot in the face with a Roman candle. <laughs> Like God said, let there be light, so I just shot him in the eye. <laughs> it's hard to aim a Roman candle. It really is. You can't. Uh, so, got kids in my neighborhood. Oh my God, I hate all of them. There's actually one I like, and this is why I like them. Last year, we got a pool from Walmart, not bragging. And, uh,. <laughs> I was filling it up with water. As I'm filling it up, all the kids in the neighborhood start creeping over to my house. Like the undead, they're all just walking over. <laughs> they come up and they start talking to me. They're asking me questions like, hey, that's a pretty cool pool. Could it go swimming in your pool? Hey, I like your pool. Could it go swimming in your pool? Hey, can I have a popsicle? <laughs> well, I'm waiting to go swimming in your pool. <laughs> then the cool kid, the kid I like, he walks over, he looks at the pool, he looks at me, and he's like this. Psh no, that shit's going to kill you on your water bill. <laughs> we should have done us taking your hose, hooked it up to their house over there. They're on vacation. They won't even know. <laughs> Want their Wi-Fi password? <laughs> yeah, I like that kid. He's saving me like $78 a month. <laughs> <sighs> so, 
So, married. It's nice being married. Because I don't have to deal with you anymore, ladies. Although there are a lot, a lot of pretty girls in here tonight. Where are you at, pretty girls? <laughs> all right, all right, whatever. Okay, I thought there was some. But yeah, I guess not. <laughs> they got low self esteem. Let's get these bitches drunk. <laughs> <laughs> But it's not, it's so we can have sex with you, not so you can talk more. Because girls, when you're drunk, you're like, I'm saying interesting things. No, you're not. We just want to have sex with parts of you. It's like, yeah, preferably your mouth or butt, because those are harder to get into. And when you're drunk, it's easier. <laughs> I, okay, I'm the only one that reads the Bible. <laughs> Like being married though, because I don't have to deal with you anymore, ladies. Because you do, do things that drive me crazy. Like I'm tired of you thinking just because a guy is talking to you that he's hitting on you. I'm a nice guy. I like to talk to people. After a show a few weeks ago, I got these two girls. I'm like, hey, what's up? And they're like, married and married. And I was like, rapist. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It's gonna happen. What kind of car do you drive? Just kidding. I already know. <laughs> it's hard to be married, though, because once a month, something happens that makes marriage nearly impossible. And it's not what you're thinking. It's Cosmo. So every month, there's a new issue of Cosmo, and they come out with these lists of 10 reasons why I'm an asshole. <laughs> Ten ways to tell that your man's cheating on you, and the reasons are all bullshit. If he smiles while he's watching football, he's cheating on you. <laughs> Thank God I'm a Browns fan. <laughs> yes. But that's not fair, because they don't have that in men's magazines. Like, Maxim never has a like, list of five ways to tell that your lady's lying. You can't, because she's the devil. <laughs> she's perfected it. But let's be honest, though, ladies. In any relationship, you have all the power, right? Yep, because you have the vagina. Big fan. Really like them. Don't get me wrong, I still like a penis. Not inside me. Uh, just because they're easier to take care of, because all you have to do is wash it and you're done. Ladies, your stuff is complicated. There's chemistry going on down there. You gotta eat that Activia yogurt to make sure your pH balance stays right. You gotta keep everything all trimmed up. It's like having a pool. You gotta keep it warm, stop people from peeing in it. Like, I know, I try to every time. You can't even do it. It's really. You gotta cover it up in the winter, scoop leaves out, keep the neighbor away. It's so much work. Be careful not to rip the liner. It's like <laughs> That's an above ground pool joke, of course. So I don't know if they make above ground vaginas, but if they do, they're cheaper. <laughs> You'll get a deal. So you learn things when you're married. You don't want to know about, I learned about tampons. I never wanted to know about tampons, but I know about them now. Like when I first got married, I'd see them all the time. Two ways, when they're in the wrapper or when I had to take them away from my dog. But it's like, why is that my job? <laughs> right? It's not fair. But I never knew how they worked. And then like one day I was home by myself and I saw one. So it was like brand new sitting on the counter in the bathroom. And I, you know, I'm a curious guy. I like to watch Mythbusters, so I wanted to experiment. So I take it, like, you know, I pick it up and I take the wrapper off. It's got like a plastic sheath on it. So I pull that off like I'm taking the sword out of the stone. <laughs> I was like, now I'm king. And then I saw like the absorbent part, like the little cotton absorbent part. It was not big, and that's what was weird to me. It was just like this little tiny thing. And that's strange because I have fought the red dragon. <laughs> And it wrecked a whole mattress. So I was like, <laughs> how's this little thing going to get all that? And then I dunked it in water, and it just like, got gigantic. And it reminded me when I was a kid, they had those little plastic pills, and you put in water. Then a few moments later, you have a dinosaur sponge. I'm going to say that again just for the edit, because I said dinosaur sponge. <laughs> A few moments later, you had a dino. You have to laugh after I say dinosaur sponge, too. <laughs> it might be better just to do what we're doing right now. <laughs> All right. A few moments later, you had a dinosaur sponge. <laughs> <laughs> they should do that for you, ladies. So when you're done, you take it out. It's in the shape of something you love, like 
flowers or shoes or <laughs> half a man's belongings. <laughs> When you're married, they put a lot of pressure on you to, to be happy and, you know, like, the wedding, the wedding day itself has way too much hype in this country. Like, I don't even, I don't like to go to weddings. I went to my sister's wedding not too long ago, and I just, I get into trouble because, like, two of my cousins were bridesmaids, and they kind of look the same, and they're wearing the same dress, and everybody kept making the same stupid joke, like, oh, you guys look just like the Double Mint twins. And I was like, no, they don't. They look like before and after from a Weight Watchers commercial. Because one, one was a little fatter, right? And it was, it was funny because the fat one cried. And, uh, and then the skinny one came up to me. She's like, I know. I can't believe they keep comparing me to that fat bitch. And I'm like, sisters are mean. Like, that's what I knew. I knew it. Like, and, uh, but, uh, like, they, they, they want you to, oh, a wedding's going to be the best day of your life, so make it special. It's not going to be the best day of your life. You can't plan for the best day of your life. My wedding was great. Not the best day of my life. Best day of my life, January 1st of 2008. Let me explain. My wife is a lady. She's never once in her life farted, pooped, peed, picked a booger, none of that stuff. And I try not to do that stuff around her, but I can't help it. <laughs> Especially farting. You know how many times you can fart before you shit your pants? <laughs> 19. <laughs> That's the point when a gas becomes a solid. <laughs> or a liquid, whatever. I have a toilet seat cover that says drop it like it's hot. But she's a lady, and she's never let anything like that happen until we went to this New Year's Eve party, and she got drunk, super drunk. So drunk, we had to leave the party early. So as we're leaving the party, we could hear everybody in the neighborhood counting down the New Year. Ten, nine, eight, seven. As we're walking, she stops, and you could hear things start to gurgle. Her head rolls back, and she's groaning. You can still hear the people counting. Three, two... One, happy new year. They're all screaming and celebrating, having a great time. And at that very moment, my wife threw up and farted at the same time. <laughs> and I've never in my life been happier. Because I can hold that over her head for the rest of our lives. <laughs> like, hey, babe, do you want to watch American Idol with me? And then tomorrow we'll go shopping at Bath and Body Works? No way, fart puker. <laughs> Not doing that. We fight like about little things. Like we usually fight about what we're gonna watch. Think like, you ever watching a movie with your husband or wife, boyfriend or girlfriend? Say you're watching something like The Notebook. And about 40 minutes into it, she pauses it and starts yelling at you and crying at you at the same time. She's like, "I wish you'd take this movie more seriously because I think there's a lot of similarities between what happened in their relationship and what happened in our relationship. And every time I try to do something to bring us closer together, you just make fun of me because you're me." And the whole time she's yelling at you like that, you're not even paying attention. You just watch that little DVD symbol float across the screen. <laughs> Trying to guess the next color, like blue, <laughs> yellow, green. <laughs> it's my favorite part of any argument. <laughs> but then you got to apologize. And I always apologize to my wife immediately. But she does something very strange. She only apologizes when she means it. Like... <laughs> Yeah, it's like this whole thing. Like, she actually thinks about what she did and talks to all her friends. Like, she doesn't just say she's sorry. She's like, a, it like, takes like four days. Talks to all her friends, read a book she heard about on Oprah. <laughs> and she'll sit down, write a letter, drive to the post office, and mail it back to our house. <laughs> and it'll be something like this like, Dear baby, I love you so much, and I know that you love me. And I'd like to apologize for my actions the other day. It was wrong of me to shred all your credit cards, throw your wallet in the garbage, and delete your Facebook account. I may have overreacted. But you have to see where I was coming from. Because every time a new girl adds you as a friend on Facebook, I'm pretty sure they're a whore and they're gonna try and steal you from me. I didn't know she was your cousin. She looked very hoary. Well, I have your attention. There are a few things I'd like to talk about, though. <laughs> like Wednesday, it's garbage night. And that means all the garbage in the whole house has to go out. Not just in the kitchen. You have to get out of the bathrooms, in the bedrooms, in the basement with the cat poop in it. Because even though they're my cats, when you married me, 
you agreed to take care of them for me, even though I never told you. So please try to do these things, because if you don't do your part, I can't do my part. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Love your wife. P.S. Write me back. It's fun getting letters. <laughs> so I write her back, and I'm like, dear fart puker. <laughs> so she knows it from the heart. I have to say this, though, ladies. You're a lot more sensitive than we are, like, than men are. It's like there's things you can say to women that just send them off the deep end. Like, what's the worst thing you can call a woman? Okay, yeah, all right. One fat, two cunts. The cunts have it. Because, <laughs> like, that's, like, the, like, well, like, you can call me anything you want. Like, most guys don't care. Like, hey, Bill, you're a faggot. Yeah, pull out your dick. I'll suck it. Okay, like, you just call her bluff. <laughs> You said it. <laughs> but like, ladies, you hate that word. Like that, that, like you, like it's like Beetlejuice. Oh, don't say it three times, or Michael Keaton's gonna show up and annoy everybody. <laughs> and in case Michael Keaton ever sees this, I actually think you're great. <laughs> but like that, that word to you, ladies, that like it does something to you. Like it, like physically you feel something when you hear that word, and I think the reason it hurts you so much is because deep down inside, you know, it's kind of true. Like, <laughs> inside every woman, there's like this little tiny cunt nugget, right? And it's, it's just like somewhere up in here. And it's not your fault that it's there. It's there because of the things we do. Like, my wife will call me on the phone. She'll be like, hey, babe, did you do the laundry? I'm like, yeah, I did the laundry. But I didn't do the laundry. I was sleeping and trying to beat her high score on Tetris all day. So I didn't get around to it because I was busy. And that causes it to grow like, you know, like a kidney stone. And it just gets bigger and bigger. But you can't break it up with, you know, cranberry juice. <laughs> like a kidney stone. You have to use, like, to pulverize a cunt nugget, you got to use diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can make that word even more powerful if you put other words in front of it. Like if you say fat, ugly, I'm not even gonna finish it because I don't have that good at car insurance. Like <laughs> you say that, you you have to buy a new windshield immediately. <laughs> but like again, you can do any sort of combination you want to me, to any man really. We're not gonna get mad. Like, hey Bill, you're a cock sucking motherfucker. Mo uh, fuck it. <laughs> Mother motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, Bill, you're a cock-sucking motherfucker. Well, which is it? <laughs> am I sucking cocks or am I fucking mothers? Or am I really coordinated? <laughs> or does your mom have a dick and you throw it back in their face? <laughs> and look, right now in this country, I, I honestly believe that men are better than women. Yeah, th thanks for your support, fellas. Uh, and ladies, just relax. This isn't based on science or fact or anything. It's just it's going to end in a dick joke, so enjoy the ride. But here's my theory. Over the past few years, they've released these movies, uh, The Twilight Saga. And in these movies, there's this kid named Taylor Lautner, and girls love him. And they like my, my wife's friends are all like, oh my God, Taylor Lautner's gorgeous. He's beautiful. If I saw him walking down the street, I try to have sex with him right there. I just present myself like a cat, and he just. <laughs> now, when they were saying this, they were all in their 30s, and this kid was like 16 years old. Now, here's the thing: living about three houses down from me, there's this girl, and her name's Tiffany, and she's 16 too starting next week. <laughs> and she's hot as shit. Here's the difference. Ladies, none of you in here will ever have the opportunity to have sex with Taylor Lautner. Not that you're not beautiful, I just don't think he plays for that team. <laughs> However, I'm only a six pack of Smirnoff Ice away from fulfilling my fantasy. <laughs> And I resist, and that is why men are better. Because for the most part, we all resist. 
Like, there's such a double standard with that. Like, if, like, an older lady teacher sleeps with a young student, everybody's super excited. Like, oh, my God, do you hear about that 14-year-old boy that's super lucky that banged this hot, 16, you know, 26-year-old teacher? He's great. I love that guy. But if, like, a older man teacher that's, you know, 50 or so bangs a 14-year-old girl, everybody's like, I hate that guy. He's a dirtbag. And he is, but so is this 26-year-old teacher. And you know why? Because that's just how it is. You guys, you can't, you can't, the, the, there's, a, there's a device that makes it so you don't have sex with a 16-year-old girl. It's called their personality. 16-year-old <laughs> girl, beautiful thing, till you talk to it. Like, hey, 16-year-old girl, what's going on? I like Kesha. Fuck off. <laughs> Fucking, I hate you. Everything you do is garbage. But there isn't that device for a 17, 16-year-old boy. Like if like an older lady, like a cougar, comes up to someone like, hey, 16-year-old boy, what are you doing? He's like, my dick's been hard for three days. <laughs> and she's like, I know. Let's go. Let's go. Learn things when you get older. Like, there's just certain things, ladies, that you don't enjoy the way men enjoy them. Like, as a man, I love seeing a woman get naked, right? Because all of you are beautiful. Most of you are beautiful. And I want to see <laughs> your parts. But when a girl sees a guy get naked, they make a face like they just ate something bitter. They're like, mm, no, I don't like it. And I don't even think it's the way we look. I think it's because you know, ladies, when you see a penis, we're going to try and stick it in your mouth or your butt. And probably in reverse order. <laughs> oh, no, you don't like it now? Okay. And like, there's another thing. As I get older, there's like certain things my wife she doesn't like to do, but she'll still do them because she loves me. But there's no enthusiasm. She like she doesn't like to go downtown, but she'll still do it. She's just like. <laughs> did I TiVo dancing with the stars? Yeah, I did. <laughs> Not. Not going to work for me because I've had the good ones and the ones you pay for and they're outstanding, right? <laughs> yeah, a few guys know what I'm talking about. But, but ladies, if you don't want to do it, then don't do it. But don't waste my time because I was raised, if you're going to do something, you do your best. You give 110%. Now, I've never sucked a dick. <laughs> but if I did, I would not want to get a bad review. <laughs> I wouldn't want someone to be like, hey, I heard Bill suck your dick. How was it? <laughs> I don't want them to be like, you think Bill is funny. <laughs> You should have him suck your dick. <laughs> he, he's good. And it, like, the <laughs> thing is, ladies, like I, I love going down on you. I love returning the favor. There's one thing I know how to do. It's eat. All right, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a good job. Because I want to bring you pleasure. I want to make you scream. And I'm not talking about one of those fake porno screams where like, oh, it feels so good. No. <laughs> I want it to sound like I'm stepping on your uterus, just boom. Yeah, I'm gonna get down there and like, it's gonna be hard for you in the back to see, but I'm just gonna get down there and just really take my time. And don't let my legs bother you, it just helps me keep a rhythm. Uh, oh. I know I look like a 10 year old girl doing her homework. Division's hard. So am I. I just, I just want it to be unforgettable, right? And I'm, I want it to be so good that like when you start getting close, you start doing that wiggly shit with your hips where you just start, ooh, ooh, you start making those moans that you don't want to let out. And then when you finally hit that climax, that moment of awesomeness, I want you to make a face that looks like sloth from the Goonies. Because, hey, guys. Me like chunk. <laughs> now, having said that, I cannot guarantee that kind of intensity, that kind of pleasure on every trip down. There are factors that make it impossible for it to be 100%. Like your mood, your 
bush. <laughs> and usually, if you're drunk, that's like a, that's like game over. Like if you're drunk, uh, you're not getting that thing to work. <laughs> that's it's just way hard. Like uh, let me tell you a story. Uh, that's probably gonna get me thrown out of my house. <laughs> One night, I was getting ready to go out of town the next morning. My wife and I were having some drinks. We had a lot of drinks, a lot of rum, 100 proof Captain Morgan Black Label rum. It's good as shit. <laughs> Got real drunk, and we decided we wanted to have some sexy time. <laughs> so we go in our bedroom, start doing sexy things. And I got that drunk confidence where I'm like, I can do whatever I want because I'm drunk and I'm fucking the man. I'm going to fucking make this girl come seven ways from Sunday. I'm the fucking man. That's, that's my rum drunkness. <laughs> so I start going, like I go down, I start going down on her. And I think I'm doing an awesome job. I'm just like, yeah, she's loving this. She can't, yeah, she's so, yeah, she likes it so much that she can't move. <laughs> Because she fell asleep, right? And uh, <laughs> when she fell asleep, the only reason I knew that she fell asleep is because she farted on my neck. <laughs> so I decided to stop. Like, I'm like, this is a good point. We'll just put a pin in this and try it again next time. And as soon as I stopped, she woke up and she looks down at me and she goes, hey, why'd you stop? Because <laughs> you farted on my skin. <laughs> and without missing a beat, she goes, yeah, that's what you get for telling that fart puker joke, asshole. <laughs> fair is fair. <laughs> kind of backfired, because now I have two jokes about her farting. That is the best day of my life, 1A. <laughs> so, I'm a dumb guy. This is, we're near Kent State. I didn't go to college. I'm like, you have to graduate or whatever. I didn't go to, I, I didn't, in high school, I sucked at school. Like, I remember that everybody got their scores back for the SAT. They're all talking about how well they did. Like, hey, Bill, what'd you get on the SAT? I'm like, I got a, uh, I got a B. <laughs> B? How'd you get a B? I studied really hard. <laughs> Told that joke one time in West Virginia, and they were like, hey, quit bragging. Because <laughs> they hate thoughts. It hurts their mullets. <laughs> I hated school, though, because they always taught you things that made no sense. Like, remember in math, and they teach you this, a negative times a negative is a positive? Yeah, tell that to my bank. <laughs> Never got a call from, hey, Bill, we see you got a couple of overdrafts here. <laughs> now you got $1,000. Have a good weekend. We love you. And I'm broke, and I'm not telling you guys that I'm broke because I want you to feel bad for me. I'm telling you guys that I'm broke because I'm tired of people from India calling me and telling me to pay my credit card bills. If you have that problem, this is how you deal with it. Because they'll call me up and be like, hello, Mr. Squire, could you please make a payment on your card on this day? I'm like, yeah, I'll pay. I'll pay right now. I'll pay every last penny, all the late fees, all the interest, everything right now. If you can say caterpillar. <laughs> caterpillar, God damn it. <laughs> I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Good luck. It's going to be rhinoceros. <laughs> That's all for me, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank you to the Stone Tavern for having us. Thank you for Anthony Savat for putting this thing on. Uh, thank you for Greg Mandrick for coming out. Thank you all for coming out. I really appreciate this. We're going to get this thing all over the country. Thank you so much. Good night, everyone. Make, make some more noise for Bill Squire, everybody. Let him hear it. Thank you to Slow Mutant, the productions are doing this at an extremely affordable rate, which is nice for me because I'm super broke. So let's hear it for those guys, Slow Mutant Productions, for doing this for us. I really appreciate it, guys. Check out their website, slowmutant.com. They have, they have like zombie movies. 